Chapter 1 Christ Before there was a gospel, before there was a single word of scripture, before there was a heaven or an earth, before there was a man of any kind, there was God and Christ with him, eternal. The heavens and the earth were made, the angels came to be, man was formed, a selfish foolish and flawed man brought a curse to the earth, and so the path of redemption began to unfold before them. The prophets came, and they each one died. The scriptures were written and established the law and word of God by which man was to live if he was to be faithful to God. Religion conquered men's minds and turned their hearts cold and callous, and from Adam to Abraham to Moses to David to John the Baptist, the anointed of God was waited for. Then came Jesus, born to be king, born of a virgin. He was raised as any child, though he himself was no ordinary child, but the anointed of God, and was subject to his mother and his stepfather, until the time came that the Father, the Most High God, called him to obey his word and be baptized the word spoken through the prophet John that bid all men to repent and be baptized. He fulfilled all righteousness and was baptized by John, according to the word of God which called and sent John. The Spirit led him into the wilderness, where he was tempted of the devil forty days, and resisting the devil he rebuked him. Then God sent him forth full of the Holy Spirit to preach the kingdom of God, repentance, and forgiveness for sins. He went wherever the Spirit led him, preaching the gospel, healing the sick, and changing lives forever. He made disciples wherever he went, and they followed him. As the time drew near, he foretold the events of his death, how that Christ must suffer and be crucified. And when the hour came, Judas sold the master for thirty pieces of silver. And armed men took him early in the morning and delivered him to the high priest. They found him worthy of death and set him before Pontius Pilate. Pilate washed his hands of Jesus and ordered his death. He died on a cross, his hands and feet nailed to the wood, thieves on either side. He spent three days in the deep, out of his body, preaching to those trapped in death. And in his time, as he has power to lay down his life and power to pick it back up, he returned to his body, rose from the dead, and took captivity captive. Being again in human form, he showed himself to his disciples. And for forty days he taught them all, explaining the scriptures and opening their eyes to Christ, and telling them the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Then he ascended into heaven to take his place that he had before at the right hand of God on the throne of his glory. Now we wait for his return, and we keep the word of God, living this life in honor of God, and drawing closer to him every day. On the throne of heaven sits a king, the king, the anointed of God, the Christ, the world rejected him at his first coming and continues to reject him today, but he is coming back, not as a frail and humble man, but as a king, pronounced and loud, radiant with all splendor and crowned with glory, first to collect his church, then to rule. He will make short work of his enemies, bind Satan, and will give the kingdom to the children of God and they will reign on earth for a space of one thousand years. After the thousand years are up, the anointed and his people will leave the earth for a short season, and man will be tempted once more by the devil. The devil will rally an army to come against those who believe in the one true God and his anointed, but God will destroy this army from heaven. Then with the final believers, the city of God will be completed, New Jerusalem, now will Christ remake all existence in his own person, making it alive with Christ in all. And where no man but Christ can go, he will take creation back into the Father, and forever begins anew 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all who were found worthy and sealed in Christ, and God in all, and all in God, the perfection of all things. Reality as man knows it is absent justice, peace, joy, and all things true. Yet God, because he is God, is all these things. For this reason God has purposed that all things have their perfection in Christ. Christ is the point of creation. In him the love of God is made perfect. He is the purpose of all things. He is the end of all things. All in all points, Christ is the eternal purpose of God, himself over and surviving creation, and all is with him. It is the wisdom of God that all reality has its perfection in Christ, whereby him all things will be perfected and accomplished, and all truth be set and sealed. And the just and the unjust, the righteous and the wicked, will be judged, weighed, justified, and rewarded according to their deeds. By him are all things made and by him will all things be remade, and all things shall be new. The love of God. The love of God is 100% complete in Christ. Not only does Christ represent the love of God as if an ambassador, but he is the love of God incarnate. He is the manifest transparency of God, God's anointed one. And there is only one anointed of God. Everything Christ does, he does out of love and according to the will of God. And the will of God is that all things have their fullness, completeness, in the person of Christ. Christ is all at its point of accomplishment. He makes all things whole, including evil, in that he judges evil against the love and will of God. And no evil will go unpunished, no matter if it is gone unanswered in man's court, or if nobody knows who did it. God knows and Christ will answer, judging according to the will and love of God. What makes everything whole, what makes everything complete, is Christ. His anointed absence from reality is like a puzzle, missing all the edge pieces that frame the puzzle and give it its center. From the beginning, the love of God set and sealed that there would be a kingdom of God's faithful children that Christ would sit eternally on the throne, and that Christ would remake existence, and that that paradise would be inhabited by those to whom it is given forever and without sorrow or pain or death. This has been the purpose of God before anything was, and all of it belongs to Christ to raise, cure, and accomplish.